Recently I've joined back into an outfit that includes more serious towards and more tactical towards than my previous outfit, a sort of farming chilled out outfit. Now I'm not insulting my current outfit or any outfits before it, but from 2014 to now I've always had the squad leaders saying no light assaults in squad as I usually play light assault. It's understandable that squad leaders would say this as light assaults are usually harder to lead than heavies and the reasons that they give is you can't help the squad out and if you die we can't revive you. Now the latter of that I actually agree with. The light assault gameplay that I'll be showing in this will show light assaults that when they die they can't be revived by their squad mates and that's sort of the whole purpose of it. But the notion of you can't help the squad out, I disagree with that. So when defending a base the majority of base attacks originate from a Sunderer and I think it's more useful to have one dedicated light assault per squad to be tasked with taking down those Sunderers or an infiltrator with EMP grenades for taking down beacons if it's more of a tactical assault. Now I know that attacking a base is different as it's rare to have enemies that have extra Sunderers placed on their own base so I'm fine with light assaults not being preferable by the squad leaders. When defending a base, a squad objective is usually get everyone together, take the point, then kill the Sunderers. And it's understandable as that's a straight line linear path. You spawn at the base, go to the A point, and usually the Sunderers are actually behind the A point from the perspective of the spawn. But the path of least resistance would actually be to kill the Sunderers, then clean up the point. Otherwise, it relies on what faction has the most population to pump out of their spawn point to fight on the point. Now if the whole squad does this, there's going to be a lot of wasted time on defence and by the time you get to the point, there'll be about a minute left on the clock and that's not preferable for squad play. So I think it would be better to get one light assault to do it by moving faster, using drifters and possibly using a crossbow with recon darts to figure out its location, it would be a lot quicker and it wouldn't waste as much squad resource. And also, if they take this under a down, it makes the fight a lot easier for the rest of the squad. Now, I don't think that this is a waste of a squad member, because it's just like having one friendly to spawn a Sunderer to deploy at the next base, while having the rest of the squad drop on point from a galaxy. The light assault would help the squad out not from being with them, but by having the same end goal, which is defense of the base. So this is why the you can't help the squad out notion is incorrect. So now I'm going to show some gameplay of me playing this light assault loadout in a squad earlier this week. Fair enough, the, the first one isn't exactly the tactical squad, it's more of a chilled out squad, but it was taking a while for everyone, including people not in our squad at this fight, to find out where the Sunderers were. And as soon as I spawned a light start, I was able to take out two Sunderers in about a minute. So here we go. Okay, so we're on Hosin here, Broken Veil Garrison. It has a jump pad, which makes drifting way easier, and obviously it's Hosin, so nice tree cover. I see the Sunderers down here, there's a lot of people surrounding it, I drift over to it, and I come in from an elevated position. Pop some two C4s on it. Bam, there goes the Sunderer. Oh, it's no. destroyed. Got it. And you're down. So obviously not every fight is going to be like that. I, I was like lucky to have a jump pad there to use it properly and also not to be noticed. But this is sort of the principle of light assault. So you do this as many times as until it works like this. So now I've spawned in again. And the squad leader is asking, where's the other Sunderer? They still pop in this hex. So I see two people over to the south of the base, drift over and realise uh, it's an invisible Sunderer down here. Pop some 2C4 on it again from an elevated position, blow them up and start taking it down with my rocket rifle. Using drifter jetpacks to avoid the enemy. Two Sunderers taken down in under a minute. So here's a defense of Indar Comray. We had multiple squads for this. So I, I've realized that Sunderers would be placed around the back right of the base. And so did the platoon leader. He placed the smokes that you see popping in right now. I decided to fly around even further than those smokes in search of an enemy Sunderer. Getting quite annoyed at that sniper. So I found a Sunderer, surrounded by no one. I thought I may as well take it out, just to do a bit more damage to the enemy. I 
killed their Sunday in the uh, garage. I think they have another one though, just there's no one here. So I continue on my search for Sandra and any other people. Give some reconnaissance for the rest of the team. They have a Sunday on the vehicle pad. Invisible Sunday on the... They have an invisible Sunday on the vehicle pad. So this video is more food for thought for squad leaders that want to increase their effectiveness of their squads. Take it with a grain of salt as it is my opinion and everything. Anyway, thanks for watching. C4 on Sunday. Sunday down. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Jenna, what are you doing laying down on the job? Get up. I know. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Lazy bones.